So guys, without any further ado, it is going to be 3DB in the bottom part of the map. Uh, and he's a Chinese man playing the English right now in this map. In the blue. And in the uh, western side, it is going to be uh, it is going to be Jordan AoE coming from Age of Empires to playing the uh, Rus of all things. So we're gonna have another pesky matchup: Rus versus English. Which Age really of Empires Two is obviously you could say the closest game to Age of Empires Four in terms of strategy. You know this medieval essence, so yeah. Perhaps I would give him a slight advantage, but obviously if his uh, if his opponent has been Adhering to the meta, like we saw from Lucifron, it should really be no contest. Yeah, we, we shall see honestly, right? Of course, this comes down to early scouting, because you can. we have seen, you know, the Rus defending against the English aggression quite efficiently with Calajur versus Don Arti, right? So that was an interesting game that showcased that you can defend a run push. You just recognize it's coming soon enough, and it's kind of something that you can predict against the English. Uh, right? the, English. The, I think the axiomatic point of that is not only the defense, but the counter push. You need to be very, very keen on pulling the trigger whenever you get the opportunity. And that's something that comes with experience, really. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. So that is actually going to be a very good uh, kind of point in this discussion, I believe, seeing how exactly Jordan does. Uh, in this context, yeah, B is a, I think B is a less known SC2 player, uh, so we have this kind of clash of, of you know, RTS pros really, uh, we'll see how exactly those guys fare in this, in this scenario, so, um, yeah, that's kind of interesting. Already beginning in the aggression here, these sheep. Yeah, it's actually sheep contested, so Jordan's able to kill one of those sheep and get the bounty, and we see contest actually on those deer as well, and it's actually one of them is denied, so it's kind of a small micro battle here coming from a 3db and uh, this is answered because like you, if you stand still your sheep just stays away and three melee hits are going to be enough to kill a sheep so what's jordan what jordan is doing actually is he, he's gonna deny the sheep from his opponent of course that's quite good and actually that is countered by jordan uh sorry by 3db killing off another deer so it's impossible actually i think for for jordan to contest this which is very unfortunate he would like to have a second scout together here kind of following uh, the scout of the English, which is uh, obviously not possible anymore. But this being said, Jordan is going to be kind of happy with taking those two hands in the in the eastern side of the map. I don't think this can be stopped in any way or form. So that is definitely the case here. Uh, 3db is obviously going to be very happy, uh, but because he was able to deny at least one hand, but he had to pay with two sheep for this. There's obviously quite a lot of food, 500 food that he's not going to be able to harvest easily. Uh, and with this being said, he's going to also be going up towards that uh, feudal, right? So 3db going with five villages towards that feudal age. Um, you have to say that's kind of the correct thing to do. However, you have to also note no freaking villages on wood yet. So even if he's going to go very fast up towards the feudal, uh, he needs some extra wood to actually produce something out of this structure. So this might be pointing us to two things. He's either going to go very aggressive, uh, just kind of moving a lot of villages towards the wood, or he's just going to go very slow, perhaps mining stone soon. An incredible tempo shift between these two games as well. The last game, very, very slow and deliberate. Like, almost no man-on-man -man action, spear-on-spear -spear action until nearly 10 minutes in. But here, we've seen one minute and these scouts really starting to go back and forth, which is probably indicative of how this game is going to go. I think whoever gets the harassment advantage here really will be in the situation where the game is his to lose. You always yeah. need to be very careful for this counter push, but... As the harasser, you obviously get to deny things like villages, economy. So really, that is the position you want to be in. Yeah, but the Rus cannot harass the English. That's, I think that just is a widely accepted fact. Because uh, like the French knights regenerate, so you can actually afford to take some whole damage on those knights, right? Because they are just going to regenerate easily. The Rus knights do not regen. So taking any damage is kind of permanent. You can heal it with monks, right? But it's going to be relatively late into the game. So Rus have to play defensively, whereas the English are naturally kind of geared towards attacking, I believe, right? That's the kind of the problem here. For our Rus players, they are basically forced towards just defending. But you can see there is also this wooden fortress immediately being built here. This wood line is kind of favorable for 3D because he has this kind of nice nook over here that he can uh, abuse almost, right, to play safe. And there is a golden gate being built, of course, as the only kind of viable landmark if you're playing the Rus on a high level, because it allows you to just trade very nicely with any, without any loss actually every single trade that you take is going to generate 50 resources for free for you so you're actually trading but you're gaining resources and also kind of you know are more flexible than your opponents in terms of hunting though i do think Rus could have done better on the 245 
bounty bonus for now, which is not too much. And I think if you just kill a single sheep, which Jordan should definitely do, you're going to boost your uh, your villager food harvest rate by 5%, which is obviously something that you might want to consider. We did see in the early skirmish there a couple of sheep go down as they were chasing the scout into combat. That um, Obviously, while it doesn't have too much of an impact in the minutes or the two minutes, the loss of that continual eco uh, economical resource is really quite punishing. Yeah, it's so we'll need to see some form of acknowledgement of that, some kind of decision of how am I going to get that back? How will I recapture this value? Which yeah. we've not entirely seen yet, but I think when the harassment starts, when this kind of greater scale skirmishing begins, we'll start to see a lot of opportunities for that. I absolutely agree with you. We see that, again, I, I think that's a given at this point. Professional scouts, so we will see lots of those kind of deer carrying scouts soon on the map. But what might kind of stop this, of course, this kind of stream of archers coming through? We have like four or five already. There's sixth and seventh, and some villagers as well coming forward. I think that's kind of the mistake uh, that many players have been making. If you're willing to commit to uh, an early push with archers, you, if you're willing to kind of risk building towers, bringing two villagers is actually going to give you a way higher success rate than just bringing one because you can snipe one very easily but sniping two is going to require significant effort by the way two archery ranges kind of built as a response so we have some archers at least on the side of uh, of jordan here so jordan will have some defenses available to himself if he really wants to it's interesting to see that he took maybe 10 to 20 seconds to start harassing with those archers after they rallied together yeah as you said here these two villagers push in and another archer coming in here in the reserve. Oh, that's a different play. Look what Otto he's doing. So, what you can just uh, the okay? Question mark. He's gonna go for the stone wall play. So that's kind of a Chinese thing, generally speaking. Chinese tend to do this quite often. That's why I think he, that's where he got the idea from. The stone walls give your archers basically 75% damage reduction. It also increase their range. If you build that wall segment and then you will the stone wall gate. You can basically just move those archers up this wall. You can use that to harass the villagers. You can actually use this to basically abuse this wood line completely. And those archers are going to be very difficult to take, to take down because you're going to have an extra 75% damage reduction from ranged attacks. The only thing that can dispel this, that kind of manage against those stone walls, are, uh, you know, siege engines of sorts, right? So the trebuchet would do quite well, a cannon would do quite well. That is a remarkable build, so close. You saw these archers pulling to the top now and free oh. firing onto villagers. That's one beautiful. down, two down. So one villager, I think only one went down. There's also a lot of pressure on this tower right now. And obviously this forces the Rus to move their economy towards the left. Though this is actually a very safe position for this wall. So I think you'd like to see an additional one being built somewhere else. Uh, maybe like a slightly... That's a tower rush almost, right? Because you can actually build a stone wall tower as well to further fortify this position if you want to. So not doing not doing too much right now, though. It's obviously exerting yeah. control over the map, but it's not sniping villagers. It's slowly kind of knocking away at that building there. But it's going to be significantly harder to stop than the rushes that we have seen from the English before. Because that is... I'm actually going to use this in my games, man. I'm actually probably just going to do Strelbora with the English and just kind of go full all in with those. I love this so much because this is just going to mean that this position is just never going to be removed from you. You can obviously just... There is nothing stopping you from rotating those arches around right now. You can even keep some over here and pressure over here as well. This is, oh, that's actually a very good game sense from Jordan. Jordan just immediately senses this. You guys see how good 3db's micro is? He just immediately moves those archers, sorry, those, those villagers away. So he's not gonna lose them. He's going to keep them alive. This is obviously like a small stone. You can just cancel it. So it's a small stone investment that's just going and to- It's interesting that he was he was clearly outnumbered. 3db here, outnumbered with these archers. But it's Jordan that backs off. Yeah. Allowing these two villagers to be saved with his micro to start pushing back in now, start harassing those villagers, yeah, going actually, back and forth there, and really controlling this kind of micro engagement. I'm not sure. He's going for siege engineering of all things. I think he just kind of realizes he has to get rid of the stone walls ASAP. If he doesn't kind of deal with those pronto, and with those towers as well, he's going to be in a lot of trouble, in the world of trouble, really. What I'd like to probably see him do right now is actually going towards the second wood line because I, I do believe there is no reason to be keeping villagers here. We're just going to lose him. We're going to hemorrhage one or two every now and then uh, just because the English archers are going to be very sneaky. It's impossible, virtually impossible to defend this. So you can just probably try to migrate towards this kind of left hand side. Um, and you see actually very favorable trades once again for those longbowmen for, uh, for 3db. 
There's no blacksmith by the way, interestingly enough. So there's no no commitment to those uh, ram branch pushes. It's going to be just pure towers and archers just exerting pressure on the roofs. No gold here from 3DB either. Something no. we don't see too often. No, it's like because generally speaking as a Rus, you do not... Uh, sorry. Oh, he's English. Shit, my bad. Yeah. So the Rus don't mind gold because they just straight... Like, if you have excess resources, you can just sell some extra wood or extra food and just get the, the gold this way, right? But honestly, the English should want to have some gold. So that's a very strong indicator that, you know, the English are just kind of fully all in. They're super committed to this because there are no villagers wasting their time on the resource that they cannot just immediately use. So it's kind of full archer production. There's, again, a stone tower being built. That is going to be very and very nasty. And as I said, if you don't move those villagers, sooner or later you're gonna lose some, okay? There are textiles for sure, right? There are textiles already kind of on the table for the rules. Uh, but that's not gonna cut it, I think. It's just not gonna cut it. Like, you just need to have some extra units on the field that are going to re deal with those. You those really, really do not want to be walled oh, in on no. both sides. But look, look at that. Starting to pick off these. So one very down there. Poor decision making. You really want to have. So Jordan should have just definitely placed that second wood camp over here. So lumber camp should be here, and it will be basically free gathering of wood for a while. Now that's not the case at all. He's going to once again be exposed. He hemorrhages villagers. He has like 33 villagers to like 40, I guess, of 3 dB. 36. Not it's not so bad then, but he's just somewhat behind. I think it's um, perhaps not every day that we see these these stone walls built up in this fashion we didn't see it in the previous games and that goes to show the the level of control 3db has over this match right now any sort of expansion that jordan wants to do he needs to build it north outside yeah. of this range and while he's doing that we can see more fucking stone walls being built, like completely surrounding him you can eventually see him completely encircled in stone walls. Yeah, that's, that's and there really isn't many places to go from there, Mike. Yeah, it's a very unfortunate situation right? because, as Rus, as we have already established, you want to go up to castle. I don't think that's ever gonna happen because there, there are only two wood lines in this game. There is one over here. There's one over here for for uh, Jordan. And Jordan has denied both of them, and he is trying to build rams, which obviously costs wood. So he's gonna be forced to migrate really far away, which I think also is going to be very easy to read for a player like 3DB who has lots of experience. So what 3db is gonna do is I, I think he's just gonna finish this tower rack over here. It's like keeping those towers, they shoot on their on their own. They, you don't require anything else to, to, to make them shoot. Uh, he's just gonna contest this point over here right now. He has more economy, he has more uh, control, and I don't think this is kind of a breakable position. I would love to see like a single archer or two just being sent over here because this is a ob this, that's an obvious place. It and really, the... really, really wouldn't take much to harass those villagers, would it? No. Nearly 20, 23 villagers there. Yeah, Jordan so is also... to arrest that. Maybe jo five archers. Jordan is in trouble because he doesn't even have wood to build a lumber camp. So right now, if he wants to, he can just long distance mine this wood. But what he would preferably want to do is actually just kind of get enough wood right now from somewhere else. Maybe even buy it via this market, right via Golden Gate, and just kind of get that extra wood to build a lumber camp. Which he, I think he does. He just trades the ticket because this gate generates ticket every every now and then, right? So basically, I think every minute. Yeah, every minute. So uh, you can just get this nice straight 100 for 150 of any resource to any resource. And yeah, I don't think that's kind of... Oh, he has stone. So 3db is going to go... I think he's just going to go up to, to 2tc of the back of this. Unless he's just going to be willing to continue pressuring. I think that might be another possibility. He might just want to kind of keep pressuring yeah. his base. I think with the amount of pressure he's got on, making 2tcs might not necessarily be the the ideal play perhaps you can just overwhelm your opponent at this point take a couple of fantastic skirmishes take us oh look at that a big war coming on now these archers perhaps unnoticed yeah the problem is like you are containing your opponent like, they're gonna take a while to deal with this infrastructure here and if they don't they're gonna kind of lose the units as they exit the base and such right so i would really love to see those archers go up right now you, can, you really have to migrate towards this tower this is really good micro from 3d breathe though yeah yeah he's targeting very nice he's kind of splitting the fire he's splitting the focus of those archers he's getting nice he's going, he's going to win this engagement this is incredible yeah, shows. He, they, they are evenly matched right and those archers have slightly less damage but they have i think they have better upgrades they're still gonna lose this there's like, they're actually like one on archers of, of Jordan versus uh, zero zero archers of 3db given the upgrades right and they're still gonna be the, the, the English archers are gonna win this uh, yeah that's, that's just kind of insane to be honest 
You can see that's, that's kind of the problem here, right? They're actually going to be completely repelled, and the Rus loses the engagement that they were supposed to win. I think it's that's superior micro, these archers yeah. splitting their fire, taking them down two at a time compared to one. Yeah, Even yeah. though uh, John had the knight advantage there, a couple of knights there. Just didn't really pan out in his favor. No, not at all. It's actually impressive, to be honest. This micro is just actually next level. We see this round actually taking down the entire wall over here. So if you take the gate, you take out, take down the wall as well. Uh, but there's another one coming up. It's, it's just going to be a very frustrating game to play if you're Jordan right now. Because honestly, those villagers are quite disposable as well for, for 3DB. Because he has an advantage. He killed off a lot of villagers of his opponent. So every single villager that he loses is not exactly going to be as cozy as it could have been. Those, those archers are going to go up the wall right now. They're going to have like almost immunity to attacks. Which you have to just say is brutal. That is really, really unfortunate. Perhaps we need to see some sort of... Massed infantry, building rams, pushing all in one force. Yeah, I mean... And this isn't the most unbelievable force you see here. There's maybe 10 archers, but it's just the fact that they are so well defended in these stone walls. It's yeah. defensive. I mean, Jordan figured it out. Jordan put those, those archers inside the ram, so they're actually just kind of safe there. So uh, I do think the ram kills those walls faster than the archers kill the ram. That's kind of a given, right? So. Uh, that is kind of a nice spot, I think, because archers have no siege attack, right? They cannot attack this this ram of anything. I think that's kind of okay for Jordan, uh, like time-wise. If if he has enough, because those archers are gonna exit the ram, and you're just gonna have a very nice fighting advantage. But you really have to just kind of time it closer that you can engage on your opponent at the very correct time. He actually hemorrhages three archers for nothing, so it's kind of bad. You have to just take this fight like picture perfect for you to actually win it. Because there's just 16 archers, there's like what, 20 something, you're 15. There are 25 archers on the side of, of, Jord uh, of Jordan. So Jordan is, get, is probably geared to winning this fight, especially with his upgrade advantage. I and think the, the second the stone wall force is there. We can look at the archers pushing in now, starting to whittle them down. The stone wall goes down. Yeah, and this is going to be the beginning of the You have to just unpack those archers, just unpack the ramp. Jordan, what are we doing? Just unpack the archers. You have so many here. Ten archers are not going to be used at all in this fight for now. He's actually just... Oh, he unpacks them right now. Very, very late. And he's going to just very... There's more stone walls coming up. I reckon they're up in time. One, two. These stone walls are up in time now. If Joy, if 3DB micro is still into it. Yeah, there's a stone wall tower as well over here. So it's kind of another point of pressure, right? So there's going to be built. It's going to finish. It's going to, again, apply some pressure. And Obviously, Jordan has to win this game right now. I think he has like such a huge economic disadvantage, but he has a nice military to support it. So, if you can just kind of keep those archers, of... nah, that's not gonna happen, right? He he just has too little. So there are also villagers pulled, so he just kind of put himself at an even bigger disadvantage doing this. This back and forth here, Jordan had the game in his hands. He had that kind of that push ready for him, but he just let it slip away. And unfortunately, by letting it slip away. He's given 3DB an even more oppressive foothold in his territory. Trying now, John, to build kind of off-site, maybe trying to push a second form, but unfortunately it seems as if 3DB's defensive structure here will be... It'll take a long time to overcome. This will be maybe a 30-minute game. It's a very frustrating thing, right? Because if you're playing against this, you have like... Uh, if he managed to stop it in immediately as it happened, that's actually a very nice situation for him. Because your opponent has committed like two villagers to it. Uh, they produce lots of archers and they're just kind of not going to be able to use them properly. But if you can't stop it like here, like you have like four or five of the Stonewall Towers basically at your doorway, just knocking your units down. Right? It's super frustrating to deal with. And I'm not really sure what you can do. Like, actually, what is also important is that 3DB finally, he took a while, and he took a really good while to do this. Jordan doesn't have the most the most ineffective arm. He's got considerable villages built above here with a the tower there. Yeah? This attacking force from 3DB, these archers, they are inferior to the kind of defensive reserves Jordan has in his base. Yeah. If he were to utilize them more aggressively, perhaps he could start to exert his control over this map a bit more. Because that really is what needs to happen. He's been blocked in by these stone walls for so long. Yeah, but the scary position for uh, for Jordan is that he's actually kind of being denied wood right now. I think he made a very small, this smart decision actually, just going towards these walls. So he does actually gonna pull the, those rams over here because he knows he's executing the game plan now, right? He's building these rams. He's counter pushing because there isn't much real defense he's got against that. He was only maybe twenty three archers at the most. He was putting in those walls, and they naturally don't have much assault against things like rams, three or four rams. 
They'll take yeah. down the stone wall before the archers take him down. The problem is, like, again, like, there are so many archers here that can just go up the wall and deny those archers fire, right? That's kind of the problem. Uh, but those villagers, I think, have regained enough, like, okay, so 3db uh, has given up enough ground or lost enough ground for those villagers to be able to go back to those main wood lines and actually start acquiring the wood from here, So which, which is actually very good. It's, it's like, a beautiful thing to see these archers firing back and forth with each yeah. other. It seems if he gets through these, yeah, and now you see him backing off there. Yeah, his stone I, I wall's he not realizes, quite completed. Yeah, he realizes two rounds might be too much, he might just lose those archers if he lets those uh, those rounds just kind of knock away at those at those towers and at those walls. So he just kind of backs away. He's going to take a nice trade over here because he has longer range. He's, gonna, he's just going to abuse the range advantage. And actually those archers of, uh, of Jordan are going to go and they're going to pressure super hard. They're actually just going to... Micro that is a followers. very aggressive push. Look that's at that pushing right so good though, He's great. dominating the battlefield yeah. right now. So yeah, I'd say three to one trades. You have to run right now, it's 3D. Those archers obviously are slower. They're like way slower than the regular ones because they're just gonna are gonna be you no, know, those are slow long range units. And this means that 112 ties of movement speed versus 125 means that those archers can move and attack, move and attack. You can only run and you'll still be caught up to eventually. So this is very unfortunate. So apparently Jordan actually found a really nice moment in this game to actually go and pressure. Um, and he has actually 800 gold as well, which is kind of indicative of the fact that he has some sort of a plan going forward from here, I believe. This is that counter push moment we were speaking about the entire game. You build a couple rounds, you start pushing against these stone walls, and you utilize your arts in closer range to these long bowmen. And you really kind of push the distance you assault as fast as you can and you push back and now jordan isn't in such an oppressive idea he can kind of do whatever he wants to the, the map is his oyster yeah the three of is forced to kind of build some defensive archery ranges i guess because he just needs to produce more archers here he's gonna be i think he's gonna be fine there's nothing that kind of makes uh you know uh, jordan move out move out of his base I think like that's a kind of an equal game to be honest. Like they managed to equalize the situation, and obviously those villagers are no long for this world. They're just gonna both drop here. Please kill the second one. Thank God you do. And this actually means that I, I believe this game is kind of gonna go to stalemate to some extent. Like Jordan has enough gold to go up if he wants to. He just needs some extra food on the other side. Free be of course sitting on a comfortable amount of food and gold. So he's going to be able to go up to to castle quite soon as well. We, we might see this game actually. This crazy fuel game, it might just resolve in, in Castle Age, to be honest. That is a big anti push. He's taken out the entire, I suppose we can call it the, the detainment force of 3DB. Yeah, yeah. And now Jordan has got free reign over the map. Do you think we are going to see a harassing back and forth, or do you think we're going to see a big war right now? I think we're gonna see like a game kind of going, oh, never mind, you're just gonna fight again. You're crazy. I don't, that's such a huge That is, that is odd. Easy so B is very poor, my And you go up this wall, what do you gain from this? Like, you're gonna just kind of eventually lose this because these rams are almost done with the tower at this point. So, of course, like, you, you might kind of trade favorably for a few seconds. I, I'd really love to see this uh, this archer falls of, of Jordan to just kind of back away for a second or two, just allowing those rams to siege up properly. But once this tower falls and once the, the wall falls, I think it is going to to be just a very nasty situation for those archers. Uh, I think it's just kind of a move that is going to keep his opponent at bay though. I think that's what, what 3db is doing. He's just gonna kind of so okay, I'm just going to keep you here, keep you busy. And it's more of a smalling tactic than a tactic for victory. And as yeah. you can see here, maybe maybe John's caught on to that. He started to detach his forces from them, maybe push forward. Because this base right now isn't very well defended. No, not at all. I think they're both trying to go macro right now. They're both trying to macro up. You can see that there are like some eco upgrades going up for both players. And they're just trying to kind of go towards that kind of middle castle age play, which is kind of cool to see this game develop organically into that, right? So we saw, we had those early skirmishes and those just developed into this later gameplay. You can see those archers actually just being very pesky attacking those villagers here, which is obviously well, This is great. perhaps the, the classic AOE game though. This micro yeah. mixed in with the macro. Every time you make a decision, be it warding off your opponent or sacrificing troops it's all about the greater strategy and what jordan needs now is food actually so this is a thorn in his side really these archers they're going to be really painful to deal because what jordan really really wants right now is to go to castle finally he's allowed to uh he has enough kind of breathing room to do so but those archers are just going to prevent him from gathering from here which i think was a failed decision from the get-go like i would have liked him uh, to maybe just go farms like he's these are right now. relics from nearly 18 minutes ago in the game. These walls still stood, still causing yeah. real issues for Jordan. 
Yeah, I wonder how, they, how this game was. They're going down now, aren't they? They're not going to last one against that round. They did enough damage and they kind of put on enough pressure, I think, to, to, to actually validate their kind of existence here, right? They're... Without a doubt, without a doubt. They're doing quite Maybe fine. Maybe 13. It's like eight archers that basically bullied, uh, bullied Jordan entirely of this kind of, uh, of this mill or of this hunting cabin, uh, actually. That's actually kind of nice. I, I do like yeah. it. That's a nice ballsy move. Like you, you actually have to kind of cut your losses sometimes. I think 3DB managed to make it like, I think like two, three minutes. But I think, yeah, we need actually yet. about time. We need to discuss the, um, I can't remember the term, but it's the, the fact that when you aren't doing something, you lose the ability to kind of gain on that. The fact that he spent two, three, four minutes fighting these nine archers, man, he, opportunity cost. He lost the opportunity cost of doing anything else. Yeah. And in a game like this, that is one of the most important things. Time and opportunity cost. We can see the English actually going up of King's Palace, which is basically a second TC. It is just that. It's just a second TC that costs you just, you know, it costs you a fair amount of resources, kind of 1200 gold and uh, 600, uh, sorry, 200 food, 600 gold. So it's not a small price to pay, but getting that second TC eventually is not that bad for you. I think that's kind of okay. He could probably just go up to 3TC if he wanted to, right? Because he has enough resources to afford it. He's probably just going to drop a keep somewhere as well. Just maybe keep up the pressure even. I I'm wondering if he might just kind of go for a second keep. Or for a first keep, actually. Just somewhere in the front lines, like here maybe. To keep applying the pressure that he has had throughout the game. And obviously this is going to propel him towards victory with the number of villagers that he's going to be able to produce. The, you have to compare the numbers. It's 63 villages for 3DB uh, playing the English, and it's going to be 66 for the Rus. So Rus are actually holding a decent advantage. I do believe that uh, you know 3DB threw away a lot of villages building those walls. I think he has been sending a lot of those across the map just to kind of secure this position. Then 3DB does actually get to Castle Age very, very quickly here for that reason. Uh, but it's a very cool game, actually. I really like it. What do you make of this? It's like, how are you enjoying yourself watching this? I, I, this has been one of these kind of games where. There's a, there's a sort of core gamer that says no rush, no, you know, like turtle only, no rush. Let's have a kind of role play war. And this is one of these perfect role play wars where there's so much micro going on in every aspect of it. We see at the beginning of these stone walls built on either side, these nine, ten archers really leveraging a sort of value that is completely, you, you know, astronomical compared to what they're actually worth. We had 20, 30 archers trying to take down this one stone wall as we see now maybe eight or ten minutes later than it should have been we're starting to see a real kind of amassment of forces here yeah. and the fact that 3db was able to harass him so much is why this game is 30 minutes long and it's why we're about to see an unholy lot of life yeah you see actually stone being taken by the rules which i really like because i think they need to get the second tc as well and it's going to be kind of you know what? This is uh, this is basically the situation that you normally arrive in, in this kind of lower elo games. Just that we are 17 minutes later than th th those things are supposed to happen. Because you you're supposed to be like in Castle Age with small force around this moment, like around like 10 minutes, I think. And we have this same situation, like just that we're basically at 28 minute mark, which is I really like. I'm, I'm actually kind of happy to see a game like this because we had like lots of those kind of stumpy games. And I'm happy that Jordan was able to kind of weather the storm and just kind of get enough forces to just allow him to, to kind of graduate to Castle Age. It was not a, an easy graduation. He had to do some retakes here and there, but he eventually just managed to make it. I think he's definitely had to uh, lie on the student loan form to get an extra couple of years onto it because this yeah. has been, uh, I, I think, maybe three times longer than what we expected it could be. Yes. Especially considering the early harassment of the English. It's been an absolutely mean mid game, was hasn't it? Like it's been like absolutely just massive, massive trading. We see those veteran upgrades coming down right now. It's going to be a very normal game from here. Uh, those forces are massing, of course. Like you're just kind of going to be relatively equal on both sides, I think. Uh, we see 60 archers, seven knights for uh, our Rus player, and we have 76 archers, pure archer actually. Nothing has been produced for the English. We see some barracks, so it might be some, I guess, some spears or some MMAs. MAAs, actually. I think it's going to be MAAs, yeah. We expect because... maybe this is all the 50 archers to really yeah. tear through. As you can see on the map that they are, in terms of kind of sheer size of the Empire, they're roughly equal. Yeah. What we have seen is 3DB's 
I suppose, control of the economics of the game. And maybe that means he can feel the larger army at this point, but really it does seem very equal. We see Jordan on the offensive here with these two rams, perhaps ten knights and that large archer force. Yeah, it's kind of going to be the epic medieval battle between the Rus and the English, right? Have the Rus ever fought the English, actually? Ever, in, historically speaking? Probably. In an open, <laughs> an open battle? We, I think we can say probably. Yeah, probably. I'm just kind of trying to recall my history lesson. I cannot re remember this, but it's kind of this normal medieval battle, you know, knights, archers, infantry, uh, not yet, but to be seen. I'm sure in, in like 16 to 18 C they fought each other at some point. Uh -huh. So actually, we see the archers. There's such a huge number of archers that they're going to be able to take down rams. And they're doing like one or two damage per shot. So there's actually a lot of archers here. For that ram is being swarmed on by English yeah. beans, slowly ticking them down one by one. And I'm not entirely sure he's going to make it out of there alive, even with that counter force. I don't like this response, by the way, because this is very scary, because you're going to keep getting pushed here, I think. So I really like to... Okay, CG units in AoE4, really slow to move, just like in AoE2, but they're also really slow to build, and those siege workshops are very expensive, right? I think like it's like 300 wood, right? So, if you place them forward, if you lose a minor fight, if you're pushed back, you're going to lose a siege workshop. And losing this is actually going to very often mean that you're, you know, just in a very, very bad position overall. Uh, because you have no more siege production, you have to just build it somewhere else, it's expensive, it's going to take time. And really, if you just build it in your main base, you are losing a rather small amount of time on this, but you're just gaining so much safety. So this Something I think we need to discuss as well, 32 minutes into this game, is the effect that such a prolonged micro-heavy game will have on the person playing. Oh yeah, of course. No, no, no doubt, no doubt. There's actually going to be a massive difference here. The, the fact that like one of those players probably has more stage experience. I think Jordan has a exactly. lot. Jordan is super good at AoE too. I think he has like zero stage fright. And it's actually a very important game because this is going to propel them to, you know, the uh, the next stage in the brackets. Uh, it's just important for, I think, every player to gain some sort of validation in this game because it's a new game, right? So There have been tests on chess players where if you play and think very hard for four hours, you burn off as many calories yeah. as if you were running around. And the micro intensity of this game, the sheer oh, movement of your fingers, that, oh, look at that wall, my he dropped here on the gold actually so that's really important because you want to secure those big uh, deposits right so it's a huge deposit of gold over here of course and this is going to be completely safe and as i said this is not a good thing this mangonel so sea direction is actually not going to be able to produce much more of this game and this also that's kind of important is this mean sprinkle and this sprinkle number two so being kind of constructed here and the problem is that the english can produce sprinkles from their keeps so you can actually reinforce easily here. This is a very steady structure. Uh, whereas there's mangalers here, of course. You're going to basically need three mangalers shots right now to take down a singular... Uh, we need to talk about this war, brother. We've seen an incredible back and forth here. Commitment and a, and a pulling back out from Jordan. He's going to lose the siege workshop here and really allow this keep to gain ground. Do you think maybe Jordan should have committed there? No, Maybe we should I have set a rally point there and quit pushing. You can, you cannot fight under the keep. Like especially that he did research some extra damage tech, right? So I don't think this keep is gonna go down. What's gonna go down at all? And obviously you have what one sprinkle remaining. You need three shots with a sprinkle to take down a mango. I think he's just gonna make another one via the keep if he remembers that. Because not all English players remember they can do this actually. Very few actually produce anything via keeps. But if he does, he's obviously going to have a nice advantage. So the problem here is the micro battle right now for the English. The English need to make sure they do not lose too many archers to those mandible shots, because you can just move that mango back and forth out and inside of the train. And you can see this kind of spread formation. Look at the, yeah, exactly, archers. look at the difference in formation. The spread yeah. out formation from 3D beings, the very tight formation from Jordan. You've got to imagine that in an archer on archer room, the spread out formation out. Mm. Is it gonna be actually another shot? He, oh, he doesn't get it. So this mango stays alive. This kind of the, this is the ticket to the end game, I think, for for Jordan right now. So, I mean, yeah, he just needs to keep this mango alive at all costs. Otherwise, he loses the game. He's not producing. I really love to see a sprinkle being made here, but this is not a trade that's going well for Jordan, man. He's he's just kind of losing. He's kind of losing out on this quite heavily as well. Those seem to be like fully upgraded. It, it looks like all of his armies. He's made this kind of pathetic last stand, and they're yeah. all going to be wiped out. I mean, he shouldn't key. perhaps have came back in and back out and back in and back out. Yeah. Maybe if he drawed them back at the start, built some defensive positions, rallied more troops around this point, he would have been able to take it over and then yeah. attack an undefended keep. 
I mean, can you imagine having another Mangona like here, or a Mangona and a Springle, kind of dealing with this army for the past like two, three minutes? It, it would have been the case had he not built a fucking uh, siege workshop all the way in the front, which he did. And that's a huge, huge problem right now because he relinquished all the ground. He lost the majority of his army. He lost the Mangona, the only Mangona that he had that was keeping him in the game. He's producing Springles, really not fighting units. They're actually good against other Springles right now. That's the only thing they can do. So the Would you say this here, is the end, Mike? It's been 35 minutes. Oh, they're starting to back out now. They, we have an unbelievable amount of archers, but there isn't quite enough siege equipment, I think. Oh, he's going for Berkshire Palace, which is going to be another keep of the English, that, just that this is also Imperial Age of Construction. So it is actually going to mean that you know, our Rus player is going to be dealing with a, an Imperial Landmark, which is really potent. Because it's 50% extra weapon range and double the number of arrows that it fires. It's going to be a fully upgraded, ridiculous keep just at his doorstep right now. It's, I cannot imagine this being stopped anytime soon, to be honest. The and points of whose base is whose has been, sh has been blurred and shifted now to such a degree that inside of Jordan's base there are these mega structures built. Another and problem that's... is, like, yes, Jordan is going to go up himself, but he is building a high armor, which is going to give him lower costs for any siege engines he produces, but there is only a limited range in which it happens. So again, this is too aggressive siege rogues replacement. I don't think he gave enough consideration to this build. Like this, this kind of Especially build. considering the stone walls being built the entire game, no, you know it's... that 3DB is this kind of aggressive player. Yeah. I mean, we're gonna see cannons eventually from Jordan. He has enough gold to build like one or two cannons here, which is obviously going to be great. But there is no fit. Like, you cannot fight it under the range of Berkshire Palace. It's too potent of a building. It is so immediate. Like, this is so much immediate power, honestly. I cannot believe that this was kind of allowed to complete here. Obviously, there was so much pressure that I think there is no other way to do it. This just had to happen. But this massive force of the English is going to be. Not even a need for ramps anymore when you have this many arches, when you've no. got those, those monstrous siege equipment in there. There's I think this also... is going to be pretty full work of Jordan, unfortunately. 37 minutes into yeah. the game. Jordan, so 3DB is capped on population. He has like full, full massive force of units, like full infantry on the ground. Like there's 80 supply. Like, sorry. Jordan has 80 supply less, 80. This is a massive difference, honestly. Mostly in the military, I believe. Which is also even worse, I, I, I guess. It's going to be super, super difficult to defend this. Yeah, and again, Jordan, yeah. cognizing yeah, on the fact, just gives up. I think he just kind of knew this was going to go this way. This is a very good I game, think though. Not only was he cognizant of that fact, both of us were. Yeah. Early on, we saw him completely controlled and dominated with these stone walls. But really, we did see a turning point for him. He had a lot of opportunities to take that back game, but unfortunately they just slipped away from him, be it from the micro of these archer on archer wars, or indeed the building placements. That's very... It's, it's almost quite tragic to see such a small error really take control of the entire game, but that is exactly what's going to happen with such elite players. Yeah, and I think this was actually... I was wrong. This was the middle game in the series, so 3DB just took, took Jordan down to zero. Uh, 